Welcome to Big Papa Rob's podcast, Story Rewind, The Missing. I'm Big Papa Rob. Each of my stories are about one of the many missing people out there. I rewind the story of a missing person in hopes that someone will hear this story and can share information to help find this person. There is always someone who knows something that can help find this missing person. The story I will tell you today is about Andy Madison Wagner. She went missing from Evansville, Indiana, August 12, 2022. Before I get into this story, I wanted to tell you I came across this story on a website called Undercovered and was shocked that I had not heard of this case. This story hits a little close to home for me. I was raised in the Evansville tri-state area and lived in Evansville before moving to Georgia. Let's rewind this story to her early beginning. Andy was born June 9, 1998, and grew up in Vernon, Texas. In 2009, her mother Elaine moved Andy and her sister to Evansville, Indiana, so that Andy and her sister would be closer to their father. According to Elaine, the girls ended up spending more of their time with their grandmother than their father. When Andy was 14, she started experimenting with marijuana. Shortly after this, she started stealing medication from her mother. By the time she was 20, she was addicted to heavy drugs. In 2018, Elaine decided to move back to Texas. Andy went with her mother, but decided to move back to Evansville after about six months. I assume because she didn't want to follow the rules that her mother had of no drugs and she had to get a job. Once back in Evansville, Andy and her sister lived with her grandparents. In 2019, Andy was a victim of misdemeanor battery. She reported to the police that a male approached her and hit her on the left side of her face, causing her eye to swell up. I've read that she worked at several jobs. One job she had was at a nursing home. According to her mother, she loved this job because she loved helping people. One of the last jobs she had was at a CVS. Even though Elaine lived in Texas, they talked frequently and or text. I saw a post her mother made on Answers for Andy, a Facebook group, which had a screenshot captured from November of 2021 where Andy exclaimed, Mommy, I got my first check, and then went on to explain how much money she laid back and told her mom, I didn't buy one, not one drug with it. You have no idea how proud I am of myself. Just for that one message, you can tell she was trying to fight the addiction that she had. Andy stayed at her grandmother's house off and on. It was reported that the grandmother made comments to her that they're just going to treat her as if she's already gone because they're just waiting to get the call that the drugs have killed her. These comments weighed heavily on Andy, according to her mother. When her mother would talk to Andy, Andy would assure her that she had somewhere to stay It seems more often than not, she was staying with friends most of the time. In the weeks leading up to her disappearance, she had called her mother and asked if she could come live with her in Texas. 
She wanted a fresh start and wanted to get away from her life in Evansville and kick her drug habit. Her mother told her yes, she could come to Texas and then told her that she would be up to Evansville for her sister's birthday on August 27th and would bring her back with her then. I know in the interviews I've heard with her mother that she just wishes she had jumped in the car and went then and picked her daughter up. I don't know how close to when Andy went missing and this conversation took place. Her mother reported that she didn't even know her daughter was missing until she saw a message that her other daughter posted on Facebook page about her sister being missing. Looking at her sister's Facebook page, it appears that the post was on August 13, 2022. When Andy's mother saw this post, she immediately called her other daughter to see what was going on. Her mother then reportedly tried calling Andy's cell phone, and someone picked up and then hung up. She tried calling it again, and the message appeared to be one that you would get when the number had been blocked. According to Andy's sister, Andy came to the grandmother's home and packed a bag and left on August 6th. This wasn't uncommon since she stayed away from the home with family and friends quite frequently. At the time, she didn't tell her sister where she was going. This would be the last time her family would see Andy. Later that day, Andy did text her family. I don't know what the final text was that they received. It's reported that she was later seen in Oakland City, Indiana, which is about 40 minutes away. I've read articles that she left with her boyfriend, and it's reported that she left around 2.30 a.m. when he was asleep. It seems odd to me that he would know she left at 2.30 in the morning if he was asleep. The grandparents reported Andy missing on August 12th, six days after the, they last seen her. Unfortunately, this is pretty much where this story is today. At some point after Andy went missing, her mother moved from Texas back to Evansville to pursue the search for her daughter. In several interviews, her mother Elaine has had to do her own investigation in her daughter's disappearance because the Evansville police has done very little to help her. She has gone several times asking them to help search, and they've basically told her to search herself. They didn't have the manpower or the resources. I know earlier this year, a search group did help search the waterways, lakes, and ponds around the tri-state area of Evansville. There have been many rumors and speculations that she was killed by people affiliated with drugs in Evansville because she knew too much. Of course, there's no actual evidence of this. At one point, the FBI got involved. Supposedly, they went to the boyfriend's house and collected her clothes. The boyfriend and another male were cleared by the police in this case. According to Elaine, the FBI got involved because there were discussions that her case could be related to sex trafficking, but does not appear to have any leads from that angle either at this point, and the FBI doesn't appear to be doing anything else with the case. As I mentioned earlier, Brothers Underwater Recovery got involved in the search back in August when they searched the waterways, but unfortunately nothing was, came from that either. Since we talked about drugs earlier and possibly that she knew too much, let's briefly talk about the drug issue in Evansville, Indiana. Just two months before Andy went missing, there was a drug trafficking ring busted. Ten of the 12 that were arrested were from the Evansville area and were part of an organization that distributed drugs throughout southern Indiana. The authorities seized about 35 pounds of meth, 45 grams in cocaine as well. 
I know years ago when I lived in Evansville, it was considered the meth capital of the world around 2013. Sex trafficking was brought up in this case as well. In 2020, Indiana was ranked 21st in the nation for human trafficking. Unfortunately, I was unable to find statistics for Evansville or Vandenberg County to see where they are specifically for sex trafficking. One of Andy's last Facebook posts from August 5th, 2022 states, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm making progress. I truly believe this young lady was trying to break free from the drugs and to get clean at the time she disappeared. For all we know, this may have been why she disappeared, because someone wasn't happy with her going clean and maybe was afraid that she would tell something. Let's talk about Andy's description. Andy Madison Wagner, also known as Riri, was 24 at the time she went missing. She's 5 foot 4 inches tall, weighing between 115 and 125 pounds. Brown hair and brown eyes. She has a tattoo of a dream catcher on her left forearm, a tattoo of the name Joshua Brown on her right forearm, and a few finger tattoos. She was last seen wearing an orange tank top and jeans. Andy was last seen August 6, 2022. If you have any information about Andy's disappearance, please call the Evansville Police at 812-436-7979. Her case number is 22-15858. This will be in the show notes if you need to reference this later. The stories I tell about the missing, I hope arms you with new information about this missing person that might lead to finding them. Additionally, I hope that you will share this information about this person in hopes that by sharing, it may lead to locating this person. As with almost all missing person cases, there is someone out there that knows something. Please come forward and contact the authorities. Once again, I'm Big Papa Rob, and this was an independent podcast called Story Rewind. Story Rewind, The Missing, is written, produced, and edited by Big Papa Rob. I could not do this without the support of my wonderful wife, a.k.a. Big Mama. For a donation to help me cover my operating costs, you can buy me a cup of coffee. You can find the link in the show notes or on my social media pages. Your support would be greatly appreciated. I'd appreciate a five-star rating if you listen to my podcast through Apple Podcasts. And finally... If you have a story idea, please contact me through my social media. A link to my social media accounts is listed in the show notes. I would love to hear from you. Today's music was The Shield by Hot Dope from Pixabay.
This was a Big Papa Rob podcast 2023. See the show notes for links to the reference material used in this podcast.